Hi everyone, Jen Roke here at StampCampWithJen.com. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Summerfield, Florida, and welcome to my Christmas in November series. I'm so happy you decided to join me today. So all month long, I'm going to be bringing you different gift giving ideas for the upcoming holiday season. Um, before we get started, I want to remind you of a few offers that I have going on right now. So the first one is my Stuff the Stocking giveaway. For every order placed with me in November, I will put an item in this Christmas stocking. It could be product, it could be a card, new or retired product, um, things like that. Um, and then on December 1st, I will pick a name from all of the entries um, in November and one winner will win everything in the stocking and the Christmas stocking. Um, in order to qualify, there's no minimum purchase requirement, but you must use my host code if your order is under $150. If you order multiple times in a month, each order is an entry, so you could order three times and get three entries into the stocking giveaway. Um, and then don't forget, for every $50 order, you can also get, before shipping and tax, you can also get my November free gift, which is any item under $10, except for 12 by 12 papers and large grid papers, because they cost too much to ship. But it's your choice, so you can send me an email, but more than likely I will contact you within about 48 hours to see what you would like your free gift to be once you've placed your order. So, And then also don't forget that and each order for every $50 increment, you earn a campfire badge. And once you receive, or once you earn 10 campfire badges in a calendar year, you get a free $50 shopping spree on me. So you can read all about those on my blog. Um, you can type in campfire rewards on my blog and read all the details there. So, all right, so today's project is a really great one. Um, it is a money, like cash or, check holder for your family member, friend, whichever one you want to do. So this sentiment actually comes from the a grandkid stamp set right here. We're using these two. I saw these sentiments and thought how fantastic would this be for a money or a gift card holder. I thought that was great. So it's called a grandkid, but honestly, I think these sentiments can be used um, so many different ways. So um, and then on the inside, My Merry Christmas is from the Poinsettia Petals stamp set, but you can use any um, sentiment you have from a holiday set, honestly. So, And we're also going to make a coordinating envelope to go with it. You can put it in a business size envelope, but I did the measurements for this to fit um, in this envelope. So um, you can mail it through the mail. Excuse me, it is a little bit thicker, so I don't know if you'll have to pay extra postage or not. I haven't personally tried it myself, but I usually use Forever Stamps, and I've never had a problem mailing things that are a little bit bulkier, so it's up to you. But um, you can just check with your local post office, and they'll be able to help you out. So, All right, so we're going to make the envelope first. And so I've already cut a piece of paper down to... Let's see here. This should be seven and a half by nine inches. Let's double check. So this is seven by nine inches. So that's not quite right. So I need to grab another piece of paper there. Sorry about that. I tried to save a little bit of time, but for some reason, I am not measuring things right today. So seven and a half by nine. Okay. So on the nine inch side, we're going to score at half an inch. Remember the scoring blade is our light gray blade. We're going to do half an inch and eight inches. And then we're going to go counterclockwise here. And this is a seven inch, seven and a half inch side. We're going to do one and a half and five inches. Okay. There we have it. Yep. 
All right, so we can put our trimmer away for right now. And for some reason, I don't know what's going on with me today, but my measurements are all funky, but I won't have to worry about that for this video. I made sure that all of these measurements will be good for you guys, so don't worry. But if you ever have any problems with anything in any of the videos, feel free to email me, ask me questions. I'll be happy to help you. All right, so on these shorter sides here, we're gonna cut on the score lines just until they meet the horizontal, and we're actually gonna cut these corner tabs away. So, and then we're gonna angle all of our edges. So I'm actually gonna come in here an angle to the corner. It'll just save me some time and I'll angle this now too. I'm gonna angle all of our cuts and that's a little funky. So again, here I'm gonna angle and this one's a little bit longer so I'm just gonna cut it straight and then I'll go back and angle it. If you have, um, as much as I love um, paper snips, if you have longer scissors, those would be really good for this project, right? At least this part of the project because it's hard to angle when you have to cut a long section like that. So again, we're gonna angle. I just like to angle it right away. You can cut it and then angle it if that's easier for you. Either way, it'll work. But it also kind of gets rid of some of those, when you're angling all of these, it gets rid of some of those um, bumps from the score lines too. Just finishes it off a little bit better. All right, so now we have our envelope here. All right, make sure you guys can see it. So as you'll notice, this side's a little bit fatter and this side's a little bit skinnier. So we're gonna fold this side over and we're gonna put tear and tape right on this outside piece. And then on this inside flap, on the bottom, we're gonna put tear and tape on the inside. It's actually an outside flap, but we're putting tear and tape on the inside of that flap. Okay. So I'm gonna use my take your pick tool, and I like to use a little spatula piece and peel off the backing. And then we're just gonna take the bigger section and fold it right over and press down. And now I'm gonna take the tear and tape off of the bottom flap on that inside portion and fold it up. And that's that outside flap on the bottom. And now you have your envelope. And then when you're ready to mail, just put a piece of tear and tape right there and seal it shut. And then you just put your address and everything on the outside. So easy peasy. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and make our card. So my card base here, double check these measurements too. Like I said, it's always good to double check when you're making a project. So this is seven and a half by seven, okay? So on the seven and a half inch side, we want the seven and a half, half inch side up to the top of our paper trimmer. And then we're gonna score it at two and seven eighths. Again, use the light gray tab, that's the scoring tool. And then we're gonna go down to five and three quarters and score there, okay? And so now we're gonna fold all of our score lines. And this one's gonna go down on top. Okay. So this little bottom flap here is actually our pocket for where the money is gonna go. Is that too big? It is too big. I'm sorry, that should be seven and a quarter. I'm gonna trim that down real quick. My, I told you my measurements are a little off, so I'm gonna trim that down. It should actually be seven and a quarter, not seven and a half, okay? So now if we look here, I'm glad I double checked. I thought it looked a little strange. It's a little bigger. So if you look here, they're the same size. Yep, seven and a quarter, not seven and a half. So seven and a quarter right here, okay? All right, so now we are going to put tear and tape on the inside 
edge of these flaps and this is going to make our little pocket where our money is going to go. Okay, press that down, grab our little spatula from our take your pick tool. I love this tool. I use it all day long. I always have it handy with me when I'm making crafts. So cards and projects and it's great to grab little things with. Okay, so for our little sentiment here, I went ahead and cut a stitched rectangle out of very vanilla cardstock. I used, I'm gonna pull over my dies so you can see exactly which size I use. So if you're looking at the dies here, this little section on the side, I used the second largest rectangle right there. Okay, so that's what you use to die cut that part. So we're gonna get our Merry Christmas from the poinsettia petals. And then we're going to get our Pretty Peacock ink. I used Pretty Peacock for all of the ink, all the stamping. So again, I like to do a test just to make sure there's no fuzzies or any imperfections on the stamp. And then since they're photopolymer, you can see right through them and try to center it as best you can. Good, I'll put it right there. Okay. And then we'll close up our ink. I always close it when I'm not using it because I have a tendency to stick my finger in it and then put it somewhere else and get ink all over the place. All right, so we're just gonna put stamp and seal on the back there and then just kind of center it in the middle, okay? And then we're gonna do, make our layers for the inside and the front. So this, we have two pretty peacock layers and these measure, again, I wrote it down. These are two and three quarter by six and seven eighths. And you need two of them because these are the bottom layers. And then we have a very vanilla and a brightly gleaming DSP piece. And these are both the same size. They are two and five eighths by six and three quarters, okay? So we're gonna layer the vanilla on top of the peacock and then the DSP on top of the peacock. And this is gonna go on the front. And this is where your sentiment or your message to your recipient goes on the inside. So this is very quick and easy once you have everything cut out. And it really doesn't take that long to cut out all the pieces either. And you're just gonna have the slightest border all the way around for both of them. This would be great if you like to sell things at craft fairs. I think this would be a big hit um, at like a Christmas craft fair for people. I'm hoping we'll get back to doing those next year. I love doing those. I usually do really well at those. Um, I sold at a Christmas craft fair last year and um, gift cards were a huge hit. I was sold out of them like in minutes. <laughs> People are always looking for gift cards at Christmas time. So I know this will be a big hit for you guys as well for this holiday season. So there's the inside with our, you write your message there. So for the top, we're gonna put our brightly gleaming DSP layer. And then we're gonna do our sentiment decoration and then we'll be done. And this, like I said, just comes together so quick and easy. Okay, so there's the front. So now we're gonna do our message. We're gonna put this one to the side and we'll do our message. So I have two stitched nested labels. One is in the brass foil sheet and one is in the uh, very vanilla cardstock. So for those, if you're looking at your dies, you'll notice there's a section that's a little bit smaller and a section that's a little bit bigger. So if you take the biggest die from the smaller section, that's what I use to cut out this brass foil die cut. And then the second largest die in the bigger section is what I use to cut out that very vanilla die cut, okay? I just wanted to show you that for your sizing references. So to stamp this, it's actually, 
for this, it's better to uh, die cut this and then stamp on it, and I'll show you why here in just a second. So we're gonna grab our sentiment from the Grandkids stamp set, and what you wanna do is you wanna take your words and line them up, oops, so that you can see them and kind of position them about where you want them to be. And then we'll take our, this is an eye, clear block eye, and we'll just, now you have it positioned on there perfectly. You just push it on top of the stamps. Again, we're gonna grab our pretty peacock ink, stamp it up, do a test. Good. And now, do your best to just kind of position it in the center. Press straight down, even pressure, and good. And now we have our sentiment. Let's close up our ink so we don't make a mess. And then we're gonna turn this over, and again, use stamp and seal to apply this onto our copper foil die cut, which is gorgeous. I love the copper foil. So now we're gonna take some dimensionals I'm gonna put these on the back. I noticed a crafter, I was watching a craft blog and these crafters had all these lines on the back of their dimensionals and I was like, why do they have those? And then I realized, oh, because when you have a bunch of dimensionals like this, if you have those lines on there and you pull off your backing and you notice that there's no color, you know, that's how you know that your backings are off. So when you have projects like that, it's perfect. It really, really helps. All right, so we're just gonna center that. And then I just wanted a little extra touch of bling. So I have my Gilded Gems and we're gonna use the biggest size and we're just gonna kind of stick those where the pointed, pointed edges are on the sides there, excuse me. And this little spatula from our take your pick tool helps a lot and there we go now we have our finished money holder with our matching envelope how adorable that would be such a great gift for anybody I know I would love to get one all right guys well thank you so much for joining me I really hope that you enjoyed this project today and that it has inspired you for the upcoming gift giving season if you like this project be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell so you never miss a video if you need any supplies from today's project I hope you'll purchase them on my online store and don't forget to use that host code so you can get um, an entry into my stuff the stocking giveaway and uh, if you spend at least $50 before shipping and tax, you'll get my monthly free gift and a campfire badge. Um, I'll be back in a few days with another project. In the meantime, stay safe and happy crafting. I'll see you soon, guys. Bye.